Howdy y'all, this is A.R. Cavalier. Welcome back to my channel. We continue the adventures of, well, Shank, because Rizzo is no longer in the picture, and he may be the wise one, as a matter of fact. But Shank has been given, where we left off, Shank has been given a new partner, Harry, officially known as Harold III in the Android naming uh, terminology. And so, when we left off, he also, he had, he rolled a, a 12 for his reaction to being put with an android. So, Shank loves it. He doesn't love the mission, but there's something, he really digs the android. He thinks the android is very cool. He's never really worked with one before, like that, at least not an Epsilon model. He's, he's probably seen some of the older ones that look less human. And the Epsilons, they they look human, except on close inspection, like they don't sweat. They do have real skin, but they are, uh, the, the skin doesn't sweat, and it's not, you know, it's not an organ. It's, it's just there to give them that appearance. So the first thing we're going to do today, when we start here, we're going to go ahead and make him. We're going to hop over to our um, Hostile Synthetics supplement and we're going to custom build an epsilon series and as a, a sort of a gm fiat i'm just going to say because this guy's uh you know he, he's a government model he's very high in the you know he, he's a high program a high dollar item so we're just going to pretty much load him up we're going to say he's got the 110 series chassis, and that's going to give him these particular attributes, strength 11, 9, with two hull and two structure, because androids, they're treated more like vehicles. Instead of, instead of losing health and such, they take, they take damage on their own tables when they get hit. The default is a Model 4 computer, and that basically just tells you the number of programs that they can they can run and in this case it also um is used to limit the number of or describe the number of skills they can have we're gonna give them intellect three and level three if you think you're gonna spend half a million on on your super robocop then why not spend a full a full million and I think since he's um, he, it, I, I think the android, it is, um, I don't know if I'm going to do like a full, I, pro I probably won't do like a full character sheet for the android. And I think what I will give, so when you're building the Android, all right, the combined expert skill levels cannot exceed twice the intellect. So it's got a intellect of three. So that means he can have six, six skill levels. And it can only run a number of programs simultaneously equal to the intellect rating, uh, three. So he can have a number of uh, he, he can have a number of programs. It just takes a while to download from one to the other. So if, you know, no no matrix. I need to fly a helicopter. No, 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 no. Oh, I know how. Yeah, it's nothing. It's kind of like that, but uh, think AOL. You know, with <laughs> a little progress bar going across as he downloads that. Uh, uh, that new program and there are okay three options now he is law enforcement let's see and there's also some additional um, options over here on the other page let's see probably subdermal armor he is a law enforcement Android. I would think 
a radio scanner at least. And I would think an optical video scanner as well. Just because if he is a if he is a law android, he would you know want to be uh, filming filming the perps getting arrested. Well, let's see if there's anything else. Uh -huh. Here are some other options, and I, I'm just gonna skim through them. Not I'm gonna pick. I'm not gonna make you let's suffer through me going hmm, uh, hmm, hmm for half an hour. You should see me going in the grocery store trying to decide which flavor of toothpaste to get but these are the these are the different things that you can get for the android all right so we hit pause and i'm going to go ahead and write up the uh harry and i'll be right back all right, well, the NPC department, budget department, didn't really care about the overruns on this one. So I put them in. I just decided to make the character, uh, make the android in a note in roll, in roll 20. So it's a Herald 4 Epsilon class custom law enforcement android. Here are the attributes that they have or that, that it has based on the frame and everything from the uh, Hostile Synthetics book. Strength, Dex, zero endurance because it doesn't, it doesn't tire, it has a, a fuel cell, and it doesn't take damage like a human does. So zero for that. And then eight, intelligence, uh, 12 or C. Let me be, yeah, <laughs> C for education because of its data banks and two for social because once people realize it's an android it has you know, its property basically and now i'm going to go decide what skills to get all right so i i, I spoke a little error last time the the computer level for the Android, that determines the maximum skill level that they can have. It's actually intellect determines the maximum number of resident programs they can have running. So I've st I put a star by the ones that he keeps basic. I think admin for the law, law enforcement kind of, kind of stuff. And then brawling and gun control. So right now in his normal mode, he knows the law, I am the law. And he knows how to subdue criminals, basically. If they are, you know, maybe moving into a wilderness or a more tactical type thing, then the, you know, the android can can move around. Uh, he can learn. He can download his driving program or his medical program and his investigate program, basically depending on where he's going to work. So when he you know, if he goes mainline, full service, you know, they will kind of, you know, depending on what they want him to do for the day. If he's going to work in the lab or walk the beat. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to worry about the, the sheet. I'm just putting this stuff right there. All right, so that is Harry, Harold Four. All right, now, old uh, Shank, he he's really still not. He he really still doesn't want to go. So he's he's going to go on his own time. Because the because uh, Dana tells them that they'll be leaving within a couple of days as they get the final flight plan and everything organized for them to go. He's going to try to get a a get an appointment with uh, what's her name. Millionaire Tenik Tenik uh, Renee uh, Pegram. 
He's, he put, so he puts in a request. He's he's not taking the Android with, but he he's going to put in a request to speak with her, and she she lets him she lets him in. She makes a she makes an appointment. Allows him to come on up. So he lands the uh, he lands the the police the the flitter on top of her building as he did before. No sign of any gunfights or anything. You know, completely cleaned up, of course. And it was probably back to sparkling perfect the next day. And Renee comes out with her entourage again. And she is drop-dead stunning. She's wearing barely a dress. <laughs> very revealing. Very intoxicating. Very distracting for our hero. <laughs> and he's basically going to make a plea. He's going to make a plea. You know, send somebody else. You have all these resources. You could send somebody who can really, really take care of that. And so she, um, she takes her, takes him into her office, and you know she's doing the whole being sultry. <laughs> big sultry thing and says uh, really that's true we have people if we just wanted to kill the general we could do that yeah but you've been chosen in this escapade somehow you've been here from the beginning deputy Deputy Chief, Deputy Chief, my apologies. You've been here from the very beginning, from the very beginning of the case. And I don't consider myself to be overly superstitious, but something inside of me tells me that you, that you are the one who needs to go and arrest General Meade. And so he's going to he's going to plead his case. It is going to be very hard. I am uh, pretty much not even going to have a role because she's already decided. She's already decided. Um, but she she is going to use her her, uh, her her feminine wiles to seduce him to try to get him more. She has him under control already from an institutional level. She's in charge of, of his boss's 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 boss. She has that kind of influence. But now she is going to start, you know, rubbing up against him, gently caressing him, and those kind of things. So we're going to... I guess I will kind of treat it... I kind of treat it like a confrontation, because he's you know he's he's no simp, he's or well maybe he be, he will be a depends on how he rolls, but he he knows it's trouble. He doesn't want anything to do with her when he starts. But what a dish! So we will have. Well, I'm going to give him a roll. So all right. So the convincer double or higher than opponent. Let's see what is his. Social eight. All right. Well, she couldn't have a. Well, I guess she could have, but probably not in this setting. Uh, oops, come here. So plus one. Let's see. The convincer. No, convincer has lower. And. All right, so she's going to try to seduce him. He's going to make the social roll with a. I'm going to give, I'm going to say that she definitely has some kind of liaison skill just because of, of her business acumen and the fact that she's smoking hot. So <laughs> um, he's going to, he's going to try to resist her wiles because he knows where it's going, but we'll see. Seven. All right. Not, not, not quite. Um, uh, it, it takes it takes her maybe a little longer than she was expecting, but 
before he, you know, before he knows it, she's sitting on his lap and biting his lower lip, and then uh, we fade to black as she turns off all the. Uh, well, actually, she doesn't turn off all the security cameras, um, and he knows there's probably security cameras, but he he goes along with his male instincts and uh, has a a fond uh, farewell before being shipped off off planet. <laughs> the rest, the next couple of days are sent are spent getting things ready, making sure that all the travel passports are correct. All of the flight plans are set up, all of the shipping, all of his authority paper, all that, all that stuff. And two days later, he's up on, he, they take a shuttle because the tap pipeline's too slow, too slow for justice. And they take the shuttle up to Liberty Station, which is at, at the top of that tap pipeline. Watches Nexus City shrink into nothing but a uh, tight uh, bundle of tiny lights down at the bottom as they log in. Now they are going to be basically going to be uh, shipping. Let's see, what would be a good type of good type of ship? Oh, well, I guess. First, let's figure out how far away Tau Ceti is. Excuse me. I don't remember. It's like 15. I don't know. Let's find our off-world stuff. All right, so there's Tau Ceti. It's in the near-Earth zone. X807. Right there, so it's only one, two, three, four. Four parsecs away, so that's that's a actually a pretty short... It's going to be a pretty short jaunt, so he doesn't need any kind of special... Special deal. There's going to be a... Uh, let's take a look and see what kind of ship we got here. And we see here, Federal Marshal passenger suggestion if we're going to do a... Uh, if we're going to do a shipping campaign. But we know where we're going, so we don't actually have to fool too much with this stuff. We don't have to develop planets or anything like that. But let's go. All right, so it's pretty close. Let's go determine the type of ship that we're on. Say that they are, they're just going to take the USS Kyle Schaefer on route to Tau Ceti already. So it's a um, military transport. Um, if I've got this right, it looks like it's an Argosy, a Tharsis Argosy class colonial freighter, but this particular one is military, owned by the military. So that gives it uh, two parsecs per week. So not not super not super fast. So two week two weeks in hyperspace. Let's see if there's any kind of encounters on the way out. It's a military transport. In the solar system, so I'm I'm I don't really think there's going to be anything that, um, yeah you know, yeah they're not going to be jumped by pirates or anything probably, but it is a it is kind of way out there. It's going to take them. It's going to take them a little while to transit to the to the to the jump points.
one, two, ship encounter, the main world has an A5 starport, which it does. DM plus two, all right, so plus four for encounter. 14, a gunboat. All right, so they they encounter a gunboat, but they're, you know, they're all, <laughs> they're all on the same side. Um, well, might, I guess it, it's soul, so it could be somebody else's. But I'm gonna say, of five through or four through six, it's it's gonna be uh, American or uh, CAS. Not this, yeah. yeah. So this is just a gunboat, and the gunboat is actually just there to escort them. He spends he spends time getting getting used to the. You know where his his bunk is going to be. Well, his his bunk is going to be you know the sleeping chambers once they go into hyperspace. But he has he has a little quarters he's got for because he's a a guest considered a VIP. He's a you know federal agent and all that on a mission. And Harold or Harry does a. Uh, it does a, a pretty good job. Uh, he doesn't mind getting him stuff. You know, he's he's an android. He does a step and fetch it. He, he plays gopher whenever he wants something. And he's still, he basically is thinking about Renee Pegram <laughs> the whole time. Um, not quite infatuated, but that was a, a kind of an encounter that he was not expecting to have. And so he's he spends the the time out to the to the jump points, just kind of going over it in his head, reimagining all the uh, all the fun time, all all the happy fun time things they did. And then it gets time to uh, for everyone to to get in their sleep pods. The crews are starting to go in. He's going in. And Harry, Harry has like the specific ability uh, to. He's got his medical program loaded because he doesn't need his admin right now. He's got his medical program loaded to help him make sure that you know the jump that that uh, Shank is able to get into his jump uh, bed and all that stuff, go into the hypersleep, all that. Don't worry, don't worry, Shank. I'll be right here waiting the whole time. I'll make sure everything goes well. And I've been talking with the military android who runs the ship during jump, and she is quite capable as well. Whether or not the android actually considers himself he and the other android she, who knows, but that's for the, uh, at least for the human comfort of as they're, <laughs> as they're speaking. In uh, identifying with people, they've taken those, I think generally would take those kind of uh, d descriptions. Does anything happen in hyperspace? As the, he, he starts to feel cold. It's been a while since he's been off world. He doesn't like, most people don't like the hypersleep feeling, but he goes to sleep. And let's see if anything happens during the jump. It's going to be two weeks. I'm going to have to uh, have a pause it for a minute, so because I haven't run one of these campaigns yet, so I'm a, I just need to touch touch base on it. Get myself familiar with the tables and stuff. Does anything, anything happen in hyperspace? I'm gonna say probably not. No, both so. though. They pop out of hyperspace, and Harry is able to get get Shank out of his uh, out out of his sleep coma and everything, and gets him warmed up. Gives him the foot rub and the hot cocoa and <laughs> and everything else you know uh he he does actually you know fetch him his slippers and stuff uh when he gets out because the floor <laughs> because the floor is cold 
they arrive in the Tau Ceti. Everything looks pro, um, copacetic so far. At least none of the crew members that are waking up with him are screaming, and there's no red lights blaring. So to see how long, just out of curiosity. Right, so this particular hyperspace point was five times 10, 50 million kilometers. And as we look at our Argosy, all right, so 20 million kilometers per day. So two and a, two and a half days to get in. Uh, to get around. Now here, we may actually get some kind of encounter because there's a war going on in the system. And even though the, the CAS, the American states, have more of the, the space, you know, they have space dominance, they're still supporting enemy, you know, like supply ships and smugglers and things like that. That are still supporting the 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 other faction. And let's see, let's see what, let's see if they encounter anything on the way back or, or on the way to Tau City proper. Oh, oh, six and a six ship malfunction. Uh oh. Hope he knows where his OBA is. His oxygen breathing apparatus. Ship malfunction table. Oh look, new new android partner goes crazy and kills everybody. <laughs> Not just kidding. All right, two and a four ships boat lifeboat auxiliary craft drive. All right, so that's that's not really something that that he has to worry about. Uh, it would be it'd be a little different maybe if they were gonna if they needed it to do something. But Tau Ceti has a uh, has a B class starport, so it has a a high port. They continue on uneventful. Um, Shank spends the whole time working with Harry going over tactics, learning about the planet, the the forces, and they've been given a, a basic intel package of where General Meade's compound is. Of course, it's not, you know, it's not anywhere convenient, it's not anywhere handy, it's not anywhere where there's, you know, or they're going to get a lot of support necessarily but their their packages are supposed to meet somebody they're going to have a, a contact from the marshal's office on tau Ceti and who's also supposed to have some kind of contact or hook them up with someone in the army u.s army's intel division and supposedly, at least the plan that somebody back home gave them was that they're going to get a they're going to get a small crew so that they don't draw attention or whatever. They're going to just get a small crew and head up to what the documents call the cult headquarters. <laughs> um, So they, they dock at the station while the uh, cargo and everything is being offloaded to be sent where it needs to go by shuttles later on. They are put on them and a couple other probably transferees, you know, uh, coming from Earth to assume duty stations. Nothing really interesting in the chit chat. They fly down and land at the main city on Tau Ceti. All 
right, there's our CAS colony. And there's the terminal. I'm assuming that's going to be the landing terminal. I guess I should probably actually read up a little bit on, <laughs> on this. These are the these are the files that they've been going over, talking about the local flora and fauna and the deadly and dangerous uh, plant life. Which I guess it's not terminal, it's actually Lindbergh. So they're flying down on the on the shuttle from the Lindbergh High Port, along, like I said, with the with the troops, and it's it's definitely a large utility shuttle, probably one of those 90 ton 90 ton deals. The Thunder Chief dropping supplies and they see the uh, bustling high port They're surrounded by uh, Lindbergh is surrounded by concrete walls topped with rotating spikes and electric fences in order to detour Tau Cetius gargantuan wildlife just like we read about Shank yeah thanks Mary because they're big, they're mega. Some of them are mega, mega fauna. Meanwhile, there's daring ranchers. <laughs> so and they walk down, and it's it's a it's a two point six million, two point six million people in this in this Lindbergh colony, uh, and it's outlying cities of Sagan and and Terminal. So they land. They've been in contact with the person person below let's go generate that that guy real quick all right using one of my one of my favorite name generators the fake name generator aptly named <laughs> um cora l parker Met by Laura L. Parker. And she's also going to be a deputy chief. She's kind of a, since this is getting so much attention from higher ups in the U.S. government and the Marshall Office in, in particular, she's going to be a deputy chief. So they're kind of sending one of their big wigs. And let's go ahead and generate the Army person. Ryan J. Garvey. And his rank is going to be four. Take a quick look. See what that is over here in the hostile rules. So, all right, Oops. Lieutenant Colonel, although he's Army. Oh, I forgot what his name was. <laughs> Brian Derby. All right. And he's with U.S. Army. I'll say he's with the Army Intel. And while we're at it, we're going to he's going to randomly generate a, a couple of, of tags, personality things. And to do that, I'm actually going to use the Just because there's more more in it, I'm going to use my little 
Try to do tails. Four and a six. I'm not going to get too in depth, but they're probably going to have some kind of contact with them, so it'd be good to know something. Four and six. All right, so she is, she is kind of grumpy. Good. He needs another grumpy. Uh, Marshall lady in his life. <laughs> and let's give her a let's give her a, a speech mannerism type thing. Three and a five. That's going to put her at. She keeps her hands in her pockets. That looks familiar. That sounds familiar. Like I did that with someone else recently. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna reroll that. Five and a one. And that may not be even correct. All right, so she she's grumpy and she slouches. And she's grumpy, slouches. And you know what? I think she does keep her hands in her pockets because I can see that. Uh, <laughs> I can see that kind of you know that person where they're 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 not happy and they've got they're hunched over and their hands are in their pockets. So she sounds she's probably as uh, fun to be around as she sounds. <laughs> All right, let's take a. Uh, Let's take a gander at Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Garvey because he will be also involved. As someone who we may be talking with more than once. So let's uh we'll get it start. We'll give him a tag. A person tag. Four three. Oh, he's apathetic. All right. Well, that may not necessarily be bad for an Intel guy, I guess. Um, so apathetic, and we'll just give him a give him a speech mannerism as well. Five three, strokes his chin and beard. All right, he's apathetic and he strokes his strokes his chin as he is uh, as he doesn't care about <laughs> people who are dying off in the distant jungle. All right, well, it's nice to meet you. They they introduce, and he already doesn't really like Cora because she's grumpy, and he doesn't want to be here either. So both of them are kind of <laughs> they're 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 feeding off of each other. They meet in the. It's actually a local, uh, a, a colony office for the the marshals. They're it's not really a, a headquarters as such, but it's their their field office. I guess that's what you call it. They meet in their field office and go over go over the plan. And the plan is to basically how far abouts do they have to travel? Because if I remember, I think I think I had put that location, that Volcano 14. Let me take a gander, see if I wrote it down. Uh, let's see, analyze film footage, they did that, okay. Survivors of the Deadly Battle, Fort Volcano 14 Alpha. All right, so nothing. I, I didn't write it down, but I, I seem to recall it was it was up here in this northern volcano group. So we'll we'll just mark it as one of those. And each hex equals five hundred and fifty kilometers. So if they are at Lindbergh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times five fifty. Uh, that is, let's see if I'll get this. all right, so that's about, uh, is that right, 550, yes, yeah, so it's about 4,000 kilometers away, so it must have been, they they were on some kind of big, <laughs> or actually, I guess it would be right here, yeah, right there, 
one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that that's a little that's that's a little more reasonable. We'll just say it's straight across in this northern volcano group. And so instead, that's going to be five times five fifty. So twenty seven fifty twenty seven fifty kilometers. I'm just going to note this here real quick. Which is probably not the most interesting thing to just watch me take notes here. But, uh, Oops, 27. I know I got that wrong. 2750. East of Lindbergh. So the the plan is they're going to get a lift part of the way. They do not want to risk any uh, too many air assets. And they're going to give them a small squad who is going to escort them the rest of the way. And Lieutenant Colonel, who knows the name I've already forgotten. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Garvey, he says, uh, we've, we've got it all worked out. We'll be leaving in a week. I just, I don't really know what you're expecting to do. They've kind of kept to themselves. And so we've left them alone. We have enough to worry about in this jungle. It's not going to be a safe trip. All right, we're, we can't afford to send a whole column. And even if we did, that would just draw attention to your mission. So we're going to send a small platoon, a small squad, Probably in two growlers. We'll see what's available. But when you get up there, he's pretty well armed. I don't know what you plan on doing, but I do not think he's going to just let you put cuffs on him. Yeah, I've been thinking about that myself. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Hopefully he'll be more reasonable. I've got all the paperwork that tells him that he's going to be under arrest and, and everything else. But we'll just go up there and we'll we'll see. Once you get out there, you know, it's going to be hard to support you. And we know that we know that the there, you never know where you're going to come across an enemy ambush, let alone all the yeah, look, Lieutenant Colonel, I appreciate it. I, I read all the all the stuff. If you have specific details, I am more than happy to hear, but I know what a shitty place this is, okay? <laughs> uh, I don't want to be here. You and me both, adds uh, Deputy Chief Cora. <laughs> uh, you're authorized to take uh, some, you're authorized to take combat gear, patrol gear. From what I read on your records, you are qualified and apparently you're Android is too. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go spreading it about that he's, that it is an android. Not everybody on planet is is uh, cares too much about androids. All right. So they wait. Let's see. Does anything does anything interesting happen? Uh, because they are, you know, there there are still you know, obviously this. There's there's two cults that have agents places. <laughs> um, and you know what? I think there is actually there is a colony event table here. And I think this is this is the same uh, same tables 
that we find in the uh, rule books over here. Encounters. Yeah, I'm going to say they're not going to, they, they didn't have any issues in the encounters, but this is a large, I think going to be a large, large one. So as, the, as they're waiting, as they're getting their stuff ready, he's, you know, he's going to check out with, he's going to get a little bit, he's going to get some heavier armor and a tactical helmet as he's, yeah, he's going to look like a sore thumb tromping through the jungles. But he's going to have he's going to be a little better equipped than in that <laughs> alleyway uh, back in Nexus City. Five one. Find yourself traveling with a group of interesting locals. Gain useful information about the world. Hmm. So if it's going to be useful for him, it's going to have to be something either to do with the colonel. Or, or, I mean, the general, General Meade, or their trip out, I think, generally speaking. Um, let's go ahead and let's come over to our theme table over here. Our install or our inspiration tables. Let's see what what would it be? Well, let's see what kind of I'm just gonna roll and then go across and see which one. I think it would probably be surface. I'm just gonna roll and then go across. Ooh, one one. All right. Oh, trader. Maybe there's a message. I don't know. I think maybe trader sounds pretty good. Trader that manipulates. So he finds out some useful information about a trader. That really that that puts me in mind of maybe somebody on his even though they're army or whatever somebody that's going to be part of the the fire squad the fire team that's going with them is a traitor and he got some kind of information from them and get another roll and see if i can narrow that down oops all right i'm just going to re-roll that all right it, Two and a five. All right, so I think, I think somehow, I'll have to kind of roll around, but he, he has somehow talked to somebody because the, the encounter was colorful people and he learned some useful information so i think maybe those these colorful people are he, he finds himself one night he finds himself he wanders into the one of the e-clubs one of the, one of the clubs where the enlisted folk are you know they're getting drunk and and having fun and carrying on and doing line dances and shouting yeehaw and god bless america all that kind of, all that kind of stuff that uh, well we didn't really do much of all of that in the clubs i was in but you know <laughs> uh, and he man and he ends up hooking up with some some people and one of them mentions that basically you guys are, yeah, we, we heard about, you know, you get some, some drunk uh, corporal. Yeah, we heard about, we heard about you. How did you hear about me? I'm supposed to be on a, yeah, everything's secret around here. Ha uh ha, -huh, chuckle, chuckle. They all laugh. You know, they put old, uh, 
we put old somebody let's see who did they pull who did they put Herbert Richardson let's drop his name in the notes over here Yeah, Herbert. <laughs> They're giving you guys the shit bag detail. <laughs> you know, Herbert, he got he got sent to I guess they call it office hours in the army, if I remember. Maybe it's called Captain's Mask. NJP, non judicial punishment. Yeah, he got busted down. Let's see, I'm gonna say on a so he he's a traitor of some kind. And he finds information. I think in this case, he uh, Shank gets enough information to be careful about the guy. Maybe he doesn't know everything, but something to you know he knows to keep track of. I'm saying a five or six. It has to actually do with the colonel. He's some kind of traitor. So he's either do, he's either on a five or a six. It has to do with General Meade. On a four or a five. He's just some kind he's in with some kind of criminal element, maybe like you know, black marketeers or something like that, some kind of gang cartel or something that is gonna plan some kind of trouble. And one or two, it's actually for the enemy forces on Tau Ceti. All right, so he's he is actually this guy is actually not um He's going to cause some kind of trouble. Maybe he's going to steal some equipment. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But that that was the encounter. So he he ended up with a bunch of drunk army guys who said, "Yeah, you know that guy going with you. He's a real shit bird." Yeah, man, he's he got busted selling stuff. I guarantee, if I were you, I'd check all your supplies. If you're, if he's on your team, because he's probably sold half of them before you guys leave. So I think that's probably a good, uh, uh, a good result, a good interpretation of those roles. So, like all good military plans, the details don't uh, come together until the very end. And what the army. What Lieutenant Colonel manages to scrape together is there's going to be one squad, and they're going to drop one of these APCs, these Army slash Marine APCs, from a dropship. They're going to drop that. They're going to drop it close, but not so close that the dropship is going to be at risk from these cultists because they know where they are and they know that that they have some heavy weapons involved there. Now, somewhere in here also, there's a danger of this guy working with the, the, the cartels, some kind of gang. He may actually be working with some kind of gang on the other side. Maybe they're you know, part of the, you know, the insurgency or whatever, and, or they supply the insurgency, something like that. So Shank shows up. He's finally given given the final call. He shows up with his android uh, behind him, and there's a squad of soldiers standing around. Let's see how they are. Let's see what their initial. Let's see what their initial reaction is going to be. Obviously, one is a shitbird. <laughs> so uh, we'll say one. One, two, it's negative, you know, it's like, oh, this, you know, this civvy or whatever. Three, four, it's their match, the mission of five or six. They are maybe not happy that, that he's there, but they are being professional, at least. Oh, okay, so it, it's true. They did, uh, they did scrape together a bunch of malcontents. That doesn't mean they're unskilled or that, you know they're they're all scumbags or anything like that but these are these are people that were scraped together possibly they thought that they were going to they're going to do it because they thought they'd get out of some kind of patrol or something like that but this squad is not happy to be there and they're not happy when shank rolls up rolls up 
And they are definitely not happy when the sergeant points and says, Is that an Epsilon? Well, yes, I am. Shut up. Yes. He is... He is an android. Ah, oh, and then everyone starts griping and grumbling. Ah. All right, well. And he, the sergeant comes over and he looks at Shanks and the android's equipment because they are, you know, the, uh, the lieutenant colonel had, you know, had made it clear that, you know, your fancy undercover vest is, is not going to cut it. So they got, they got him. Some some better armor to wear. It's not like the full kit or anything. He's not used to running around in the uh, what they call the the the, um, the the hard plate armor that uh, that the infantry uses. But it is something a little more substantial than what he's used to as he's walking through the the dark alleys of New York. They load up, grumbling, get. The, the soldiers are giving him the side eye. The sergeant checks, make sure everyone is sealed up. He hears the engines of the Mustang drop ship start to whine and, and ramp up. And then he feels the lurch as it finally takes off. And we'll call it there as now they travel. And in between, what I will do is I'm going to generate a little squad. And now this has gone from being a transport kind of a shipping, mini shipping campaign where nothing happened. But <laughs> now it is kind of a, a marine campaign, but a very specific, you know, a, a group with a specific mission. Let's see, yeah, a marine squad campaign type thing. So... I'm going to generate, let's see, it's a 13-man, I think normally APC, minus two, so probably a, an eight-man squad. And I will make make those guys, and we'll see we'll see how many NPCs we can kill off in the, in the deadly jungles of Tau Ceti the next time. Hope you enjoyed. Happy gaming.